The military sniper places huge demands on the weapon he carries. He needs a rifle that can reach out more than a mile, plus the accuracy and stopping power to take out a target just a few feet across. There may not be a second chance. You know it's one shot per customer, you only have to shoot a guy one time, and you're done. And there's a lot to think about before he pulls the trigger. The barometric pressure, the ammo temperature, the air temperature, the latitude. What's needed is an ultimate weapon. And in this episode, sniper rifles. Now we want you to tell us which one you think is best. Unbelievable power is now in the hands of that individual soldier. And that's what makes it an ultimate weapon. The name Barrett is synonymous with big guns. And at number two in our countdown of ultimate sniper rifles is the M107, a lightweight street fighter with a knockout punch. In 1982, Ronnie Barrett designed the first rifle to allow a 50 caliber round to be fired by an individual safely. His inspiration came from the Browning machine gun the heavy metal cannon with supreme stopping power. The, the standard 50 caliber machine gun, which weighs over 84 pounds and has a 40 pound tripod, is not man portable. So I told myself, I'll just go out and make one myself. His solution was the M82, which quickly went into service with the US military. Now to be able to take that 50 caliber Browning cartridge and put it in a shoulder fireball rifle and put it up against your shoulder, it's devastating. Today, semi-automatic high-caliber rifles are not unique, but this was the first weapon system to put the 50 cal round in a semi-automatic rifle that could be operated by a single soldier. To be able to set up on high positions uh, from mountains in Afghanistan and to be able to work at distances that previously before you had had to send people out to get to them. Now they can just stay put and put a few rounds out, uh, watching border areas, watching roads, uh, doing counter sniping and things like that. It's, it's, it opened up an all new field for us. Against moving targets, the M107 has incredible stopping power. The U.S. Coast Guard and Homeland Security actually use it to stop vehicles. The M107 rifle is very good at engaging moving targets because of the semi-automatic fire. So if you have a moving vehicle, something like that, you can just hammer down on it as, as often as you want it. Ronnie Barrett believes in the design philosophy that form follows function. There's a, there's a certain amount of sex appeal to a, to a weapon. So the M107 looks good. It looks good and it is good. And the latest version of this weapon, the M107A1, is better than ever. The 107A1 is about five pounds lighter. And for someone who's got to carry one of these things through Afghanistan, or somebody who has to ship a plane load of them overseas, five pounds per gun is a substantial uh, reduction per unit. Gone is the distinctive arrowhead muzzle brake. In its place is a more traditional cylindrical design to accommodate a suppressor. Uh, normally, to use a suppressor on a 107, uh, modifications would need to be made to the bolt, and the muzzle brake would have to be removed. Whereas with the 107A1, the gun is designed out of the box to be used with a suppressor. But when it comes to stopping power, the Barrett M107A1 still does the business. There's virtually nothing that the 50 caliber is not going to be able to handle on the modern battlefield. The M107 with its 10 round magazine has 130,000 pounds of muzzle energy in that one magazine. You can put that on the targets out to 2,000 meters with pinpoint accuracy. Uh, there's really nothing else in the inventory or in, on, on the horizon right now that can fill the niche that it does. And when the enemy is faced with such incredible firepower, they have to think twice. Unbelievable, unconceivable power is now in the hands of that individual soldier. And that's what makes it an ultimate weapon. A lightweight, man-portable, 50-caliber weapon that can reach out to nearly a mile and a half. But it's still...